Hello, friends, and welcome again to um, a wonderful service of praise and thanksgiving and sharing and celebration. It is wonderful to be together with you all again this week. And this week, we have a very special guest. Um, Dave Kasevich Hi. is joining us. He's the head of St. James School. And uh, many of us who've, who've been in the sanctuary at St. Andrew's Yardley remember when Dave has come to visit us twice in the past, sharing um, stories. And some of the kids from St. James School came to visit us as well. We're delighted to have him with us. And we'll be hearing more from Dave at the sermon time and after the service. And now, as we begin, I invite you to turn your on gallery mode so that you can see the faces of everyone who is gathered here. And to take a deep breath and to just take in who we see that we are gathered with in spirit online this morning. I see Mike and Julie falling in from their home. I see Jenny Porter and, uh, oh, and I see Mary Grace is joining us too. My parents from Florida, always wonderful to see Jerry Peters. Great to see Linda Labanowski and the Rays, the Ray family, the Conklins, Nick, our resident poet, the Sherwoods, Marcy and Peter, the Bells, and so many, Liesel and Diane in their kitchen. So good to see you. So great to see so many people. And Lori Kenrick, who is leading our Caring for Friends ministry. It is so wonderful to be together. Today. There I am. And there, and there is Betsy Smith. I don't know how to do it. Great to see you all. What? Sure. We'll begin. Um, Nancy, I think I'm okay. muted. Um, we'll, we'll begin with our opening hymn, All Who Hunger Gather Gladly. All who hunger gather <laughs> gladly, holy man of is our bread. Come from wilderness and wandering, here in truth we will be fed. You that yearn for days of fullness, all around us is our food. Taste and see the grace eternal, taste and see that God is good. All who hunger, never strangers, seeker, be a welcome guest. Come from restlessness and roaming, here in joy we keep the feast. We that once were lost and scattered, in communion's love have stood. Taste and see the grace eternal. Taste and see that God is good. And the Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. God of Moses, who rained down bread on Israel's wandering people, Lead us to the food that never leaves us craving and shape us as a people of service, breaking bread for a hungering world through Jesus Christ, the giver of the feast. Amen. Amen. Our first reading today is read for us by Katie McBurney. <clears throat> I'm going to apologize in advance. It's been quite the day. Um, you might hear some kids in the background. Um, the first reading is from Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 through 15. The whole congregation. The we whole love hearing the kids in the background. 
The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening, you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning, you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. <laughs> When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Oh my God. God. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is read by Nancy Poole. Psalm 145, verses 1 through 8. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your wonderful works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. Our sequence hymn for today is Singing Songs of Expectation. Singing songs of expectation, onward goes the pilgrim's band. Through the night of doubt and sorrow, marching to the promised land. Live for thee through the darkness, please, and burns the guiding light. Trusting God, we march together, stepping fearless through the night. Facing for the glooms and terror, 
Brightening all the path we tread, one the object of our journey, one the faith which never tires, one the earnest looking forward. One the hope our God inspires. Thank you. Our gospel for today is read by Marcy White. How do you know you're being heard? The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon, and about three o'clock he did the same, and about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those came, they thought they were, would receive more, but each of them received the usual daily rage. When they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Hmm. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Thank to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Friends, let us pray. Take our lips, O Lord, and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. And take our hearts and set them on fire with your love. Amen. We've heard this story of the feeding in the wilderness so many times before in our lives and in our church. And for me, it holds special resonance as we come to it in the lectionary this year. This was the first year in my life, and I suspect it's true for many of you, that I have really wondered in this pandemic at the grocery store if I would find myself at home with even the basics that I needed. And how different it is to hear this year of people who need their daily bread. This story of the manna in the wilderness, of course, is much more than a story that circulates through our lectionary. It's a foundational text for us as the Christian people. The symbol of finding God sustaining us, leading us, holding us, 
sometimes just one day at a time is a reality that is very familiar to many of us even if this may be the first year that some of us like me have lived through potential food shortage and for me living in that potential which never actually came to be i have always had plenty of food if anything i've had a little too much food during the pandemic but the potential of wondering if i or the people i love would have life-saving medical care when we needed it of wondering if i and the people i love would have food when we needed it if the stores were closed or even if we were able to get to the stores if they would have what we needed even if it was just a square of toilet paper so we come today with a renewed awareness of what it means to trust and to rely on god and the grace and kindness of others to sustain us in a wilderness. In this time, we have been lifted and inspired and celebrating the feeding program at St. Andrews through Caring for Friends, through our partnerships with the Garden Ministry, um, through all of our work gathering and taking non-perishable food items to the food pantry, through the King Lear production that raised thousands of dollars for food pantries. And one of our great joys has been realizing how much we are indeed given and how much we have to give in this time. Because that is what has helped all of us transcend beyond our daily concerns and realize how much we have to be grateful for, how much we have, yes, to fear, and how much we need to rely on God in the midst of all of that. I don't share this as an inspiring story to make us all feel better. I share this because this has been a very hard time for all of us. And it's been a particularly hard week for some of us. The news of the death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg yesterday came on the same day that I was leading a funeral for three members of a family who had been murdered and were being interred in New Jersey. And in my own life, in the week that a friend who was 30 died by suicide earlier this week. The challenges that we're facing in this time aren't just physical hunger. The mental health issues that face us in this pandemic, the isolation, the aloneness, the fear, are as real for us as they were for the Israelites in their wilderness. And the way that we live into the stories that have shaped our lives in new ways is the way we find the connection of our common humanity with those who came before. And I suspect if you're like me, more than ever before, a common sense of our humanity with the whole world and with those gathered in our diocese, in our region, our area. So it is a special joy for me today that we're joined by Dave Kasevich. Dave, as I mentioned, is the head of St. James School. Now, I have loved every time that Dave comes to talk to us, both because I admire what the, the work of St. James School and because there's such an example of what people can do when they come together 
to work with one another in ministry. St. James was started in um, a church and a parish house that had closed and was a blight in a very poor neighborhood in Northwest um, Philadelphia. And a group of people came together to partner and talk with people in the neighborhood about whether it would be possible to start a school, an Episcopal school there that would help students get to grade level and to make it successfully in the Philadelphia school system. But what started at St. James was so much more than a school because it's such a story of love and partnership and community. And even as they have graduated their first class from high school the, in the past previous years, those kids all know they are still St. James kids. So it's wonderful to have Dave here with us. And um, I'd like to invite him to just share a little bit about what has changed for them and what has been coming up for them during this time of, of COVID and during this pandemic. So welcome, Dave. Um, and, and we would love to hear what's, what's happening at St. James. Thank you, Hillary. And uh, I, I'm grateful to be here today. And Hillary, I'll use you as a sound check today. So first of all, can you hear me? Great, excellent. So, um, well, uh, friends, it's great to see you all. And I, I was quickly going through the uh, screenshots here. And um, for those of you who are of my age or maybe a little older, it feels like romper room and I'm seeing everyone, and uh, but I see a lot of familiar faces, and that makes me uh, really happy because uh, we have now been partnering for several years now, and I'm grateful for your, for your prayers, um, and especially for your support during the height of the pandemic. And today, I would like to um, invite us to reflect on the word share, and it's such a um, simple word. It's a, a word that um, can come up a lot with children. <laughs> and uh, the phrase sharing is caring, right? So let's think about sharing in a more deep, deep way. And I want to tell you a little bit about how we came to understand sharing in a way like we never could have in the last five, six months, right? So I'm going to share my screen. Great. So, so first of all, just a little background on St. James School, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about how my life in particular, but the, life of, the lives of our students and our families have been impacted by uh, the pandemic and how we've come to a new understanding of sharing. So first of all, just some, some background on St. James School. Uh, there are some new people here today, and I, I, you don't know about St. James. So, so first of all, just a reminder, we're a middle school. Uh, we have actually 88 students now in grades four through eight, and we have uh, around 92 graduates that are uh, in high school and college, and the oldest graduates are now the age of sophomores in college. Um, our av average class size is 18, uh, we have a lot of adults, so every two weeks I hit the payroll button, and I can tell you, we have 37 people that support our students, 37 people that support our students, and just want to you hear that number because that's the ratio we have to student to teacher. 100% of our students receive a full scholarship, and that full scholarship is $34,000 a year, and that's uh, what it takes to educate a child here at St. James School for, for 11 months out of the year. Uh, we have many, many supporters. Uh, we now have over a thousand annual donors. We are open uh, seven days a week now. So Saturdays, uh, we have Saturday clinics and Sunday, we have a, a very vibrant church service uh, in the church followed by dinner and other activities. And we do this in a very holistic way. And um, so as Hillary alluded to, we are much more than just the school. So 
our graduates often tell us that St. James School is a forever thing. And so once you're a St. James student in fourth grade, uh, we're together through life, just like a family. And just like all of you care for and love your children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, you don't give up on them. You don't uh, run away from them. They don't run away from you, hopefully, but we stay with them for life. So we do that through a very healthy uh, food program that starts in fourth grade. We have a health center with a full-time nurse practitioner. We have visiting doctors and dentists. We have a full-time um, therapeutic trauma-informed therapist, and we have a very active um, guardian association. That's our parents. We have a very vibrant faith life, whether it's the, with our Muslim students, our Christian students, or our families and students that are on a spiritual journey. We have a very strong connection with our neighborhood. The neighborhood has declared that St. James School is their school and uh, they take extra good care of us. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the welcome table in a minute. And I wanted you to hear some numbers. Um, so uh, I want you all to think about sharing again. And I have come to know St. Andrews as a community that shares so much. And each of you, and I've heard this in Hillary, each of you share through the church in other ways beyond the church in very unique ways. And I want you to think about what it has meant to you to share. And at the deepest level, besides just checking a box, what does it mean to you? On March 13th, this past year, I don't know where you were, but I know where I was. I was in the schoolhouse and the school district of Philadelphia announced that they were closing for two weeks because of COVID-19. And we were getting ready and we also uh, decided to close our in-person learning. And the next morning on the 14th of August, the six of us that live here on the campus met and we were scared to death. We didn't know what to do. Our youngest teachers that live here on campus were thinking about maybe going home to where they were. One was from St. Louis and one was from Chicago. And our biggest concern was food. We feed our students seven days a week. In particular, Monday through Friday, breakfast, lunch, a very substantial snack, and then dinner for those who stay late. Saturday lunch for those who are here, and then Sunday night dinner. We couldn't bring our chef in to cook uh, and our kitchen team. We were at a loss. So we spent the day praying and discerning and thinking. And the next day we met for prayer and Eucharist at the church, the six of us that live here. And we decided to, to find every scrap of food we could on our campus and to make it available the next day. And that began a seven day feeding program that many of you have heard about. And it continued straight until the end of July. And I would like to show you a quick video about uh, the feeding program. schools transitioning to online learning, one school in North Philadelphia has found that there is something that cannot be transferred over the internet. That's why St. James School has stepped up to help provide spiritual care, emotional support, even free food. Action News Community Journalist Matteo Iandonisi takes us there. Thank you, Jesus. There's so many people out here that need and they can't need that to do. And I just want to be a family and to love and to get along. You never know when you need somebody. The team school is for children in our neighborhood who can't access quality schools. We provide a tuition-free education, and we provide support through high school, college, and career. As soon as we knew that we were going to close, the first thing we did was start a feeding program to ensure that our students continue to have breakfast, lunch, and an afternoon dinner, which is provided normally. Six of us, including myself, we live here. So it, it created a built-in resource to provide this seven-day feeding program for our neighbors. 
look at how much they're giving out. The need is endless. This is the least I could do is to put on some gloves and a mask and go out and help. We do need to be with one another and we are here to serve and we can do our little part. God's given us good gifts. How can we then give what we've been blessed with to other people? The neighborhood can come together and people don't have to feel so alone during this time of social distancing. Well, I, I'm just grateful to all of our volunteers, and churches, and organizations that are ensuring that we can feed up to 200 some people per day. How are you doing? It's it's yes, it's a challenging time, but boy, have I seen people come together and everyone's looking out for each other. We're social distancing together, but we're still a community and that hasn't changed. And that was uh, Mateo Ayabeniki. So that, that was our feeding program. And and I want to share with, before I open it up for some questions or dialogue, I, I want to share with you how COVID has impacted our neighborhood and me personally. I'll share personally first. My grandmother died on Easter Sunday. And I visited her about three weeks prior in Cleveland, Ohio. And I remember entering the, the nursing home and there was a strange feeling. Everyone was buzzing around, a lot of closed doors, people were on computers, and then there were a lot of extra people studying paperwork. And I knew that COVID was coming. It was in the air at that point, and it was beginning to hit uh, New York City in particular really hard. I'm pretty convinced that my grandmother died of COVID, but this was before uh, testing, before uh, diagnosis and so on. And I still wonder. And then I came back to Philadelphia and COVID hit our neighborhood pretty hard. So we, I was, uh, this morning I was just talking to Andrew Kellner, our chaplain, and he's kind of keeping track of who he knows who has COVID. And, and as of today, we have about 18 deaths within our community. And those deaths are mostly senior citizens in nursing homes, but we did lose two younger grandparents of our families. So, and the, the numbers um, tell us one story, but you know, yesterday we hit a milestone, unfortunately a milestone that is very discouraging in our country, and that's 200,000 people have, through autopsies and testing, have been uh, marked as, as dead because of COVID. And we know that number is much higher. And my grandmother could be in that number too. But we don't know. But the impact is great. And I think in the darkest moments of our lives, isn't sharing, isn't it sh that sharing causes us to think beyond ourselves and beyond our grief and beyond our darkness. And I'm grateful that so many people have shared with us. And I remember sharing during those deepest, darkest days of COVID and knowing that that is what God calls us to do. When we don't know where to turn, when we don't know how to care, we don't even know how to respond, caring and sharing makes a huge difference in our world. So St. Andrews, I'm, I'm curious, um, and I know we don't have time for a huge discussion, but I'm curious if a couple of you would share at the deepest dark, at the deepest moments of your own life, in your own lives, and when you're sharing, what does your heart say to you? And what does it mean for you to share? So if anyone would like to just unmute themselves um, and share, feel free. Hillary and Dave, um, I mean, it's, it's an extraordinary story, Dave. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I can only think of, of all the years that um, I worked with Aid for Friends and, um, and the joy those Saturdays would bring those of us that were there. I mean, you just felt you come in with maybe all your issues of the day and the week, and then you just throw yourself into this wonderful process and you leave feeling so elated and you've thought of nothing else during that time except what we're doing and how many people we will be feeding. So um, I know that sense of sharing because you care. It's really, really it's a wonderful thing. So thank you for being with us today, Dave. 
Thank you. Hi, Dave. I'm Laurie Kenrick. I, um, I took over for now caring for friends from Peace and Marcy. Gosh, John and I have been doing this for a few years now. So this is my sharing today, just so you can see all the meals that actually this was donated by uh, a parishioner for lasagna that I cooked for her. Oh. And so this is sharing. So it's been a really amazing time for us um, at St. Andrews. It's just incredible how many people have stepped up to participate and to make meals for people that they'll never even know who they're speeding. But it is an incredible program and thank you for sharing your story. It really um, mirrors what we're doing here at St. Andrews. So thank you. Dave, I'm, I'm Bob Anderson. Uh, first of all, I just want to give a shout out to um, an interim rector at St. Andrews um, back in 1997, uh, Maurice Wazy, who went on to become a co-founder of St. James. So you have a deeper connection to St. Andrews than you may have, may have known. Um, and I just want to say, and my example of sharing will be the, um, my connection with helping Syrian uh, families resettle in Morrisville, escape slaughter and come here to live. Um, so anyway, but it, sharing is, it, it, it's, a, when you do it, it's receiving and giving, you just can't tell them apart. It's a mutual relationship. Um, you're beyond the world of judgment. You're just there belonging to each other. And it just, it's the deepest and richest feeling you can have. Thanks, Bob. And uh, Marie Swayze is uh, near and dear to my heart. And she, um, she labored like no other on this campus to prepare our campus for our school. That's wonderful. And, and we'll all have a chance to, to hear from Dave more after the, the service. We'll be doing um, a forum time. You'll get the invitation into a breakout group if you'd rather go into a coffee hour, social chat time, or if you'd like, just stay in the main room and, and we'll have more time to, to hear and to talk and to share. And Hillary, um, just uh, I hope everyone does stay. I, I have something extra special to share with everyone. Um, and as partners in our ministry here at St. James, I'm excited to share some special news with you. So stay tuned. Yeah. And, and I had a sneak preview and it really is very exciting news. Yeah. So, so we encourage you all to stay with us. And of course, as, as we're talking about sharing and the difference that it creates in us, so often we can think those of us who are on the side of giving can see sharing and generosity as something that we do that makes us so wonderful and good and we give something to those poor people over there and this is such a reminder for us today that god's economy of sharing which is what our gospel is about that nobody is valued more or less than another and that God's economy welcomes and embraces all that the act of sharing is an act of transforming ourselves transforming our sense of fear our being locked in ourselves and our own wants and needs to recognizing how abundantly God is actually providing and that we can be channels through that. And I'll say the most generous people I have ever met in my life have been people who were homeless, have been people who welcomed me into their homes, feeding me meals that they wouldn't usually be able to even eat themselves in Mexico, in throughout Africa, in India, the generosity of spirit and relying on God and community to provide is overwhelming. And it's a real invitation for us today. So as we approach our time of prayer together, as Carolyn Lyde so often reminds us, intercession and prayer is as much asking God to change us 
as it is asking God to change someone else or some other circumstance. So let's draw together in prayer, lifting up our fears and our heartbreaks, our joys and our thanksgivings in our prayers today, which will be led by Denise Fredrickson. Now we lift up to you, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts, the names of people and places requiring your special attention and care. Please put your prayers into the chat box. see anything on the oh here we go for tina winehouse and ira mintz for bud and ann holland for my mother hazel thankful for the life of kim young and sharing love and support for her family prayers for all who love and mourn the mumper family to team gretchen janet kyle and irene the family of agnes for greta emma and jacob who have passed and for all who mourn their deaths. Rest in peace, RBG. Thankful that John will be and I will be celebrating 30 years of marriage. For Sabrina Prophet and her family, for Maria Swayze, for the families of St. James School impacted by gun violence. Hmm? Yeah. Prayers for John Buplin. I, I missed some, I'm sorry. <laughs> the chat box was going quick. <laughs> we can all read them and look. And I invite you to just take a moment in silence to hold everyone who has been named and hold those who are being named in your own heart in prayer. And we pray. Eternal God, we commit our struggles and sufferings into your son's wounded hands, our hopes and aspirations into his praying hands, our poor, hungry, and exploited people into his just and caring hands, our living and departed into his hands that hold the key to the future. Bless the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. I invite you back into the romper room to exchange a sign of peace. And I didn't see it before, but I wanna give a special welcome to Peace Baxter, who I was reminded this week, I never call out as being call, joining us from Vermont <laughs> because one of, one of the um, silver linings of gathering together online has been the ways that we all feel so close, even with those who are traveling or far away. We have a number of announcements today. Um, the chief one is, as you've been hearing over several weeks, um, the next phase of our long range visioning process is kicking off next week. Um, starting after the service, we'll have a session with Jim Goodman and Courtney Cowart from the Society for the Increase of, of Ministry, leading us through um, a creative, contemplative um, 
and really engaging uh, time of coming together and listening for where God is calling us. So we hope that you are able to join. In the meantime, we had a discussion at the vestry meeting on Thursday about a draft vision statement, which, so keep your eyes out for an email from me um, that we'll be sending out this draft vision statement. We'll have time in October after we've done some sessions with, with Jim and Courtney for us all to come together and for everyone to give feedback on that vision statement and say, does this fit us? Do, do we want to change anything? Is there anything missing? Is there, any, is there too much? Um, and we'll have time to engage with that. And then it'll come back in January after we've gone through even more practical visioning work. Um, and we'll ask, does this still fit us? Does this you know, signify where we're going? So there will be plenty of opportunities to give feedback and to help revise. We're not wordsmithing it, um, but we are uh, looking for, for your input and your thoughts and feedback about what makes St. Andrews such a special community to you and how it is that we envision ourselves responding to God's mission in our time. Of course, we encourage you to stay after the service to hear more about St. James. And um, as, as a reminder, this was in the, um, the email this week, we are excited to begin phased in-person gatherings at, um, at St. Andrews. And this will start with an outdoor blessing of the animal service on October 10th. We'll meet in sort of that natural amphitheater that's behind St. Andrew's house. There will be X marks for people to stand on, will be social distancing. It will be a short service of blessing and a time to joyfully gather with pets or without pets. All are welcome. So we look forward to having that time together. We thank you to all who are sustaining the financial life of our community. Your contributions are so important to sustaining the work that we do. You can give online at the standrews.org website, or you can mail a check to the office. And we give thanks for the many who have given in this time. Know what a huge difference you're making. Our offertory hymn is actually one of my favorite hymns for the splendor of creation. For the splendor of creation that dawns us to inquire for the mysteries of knowledge to which our hearts aspire for the deep and subtle beauties which delight the eye and ear for the discipline of logic the struggle to be clear for the unexplained remainder, the puzzling and the odd. For the joy and pain of learning, we give you thanks, O God. For the scholars past and present, whose bounty we digest. For the teachers who inspire us to summon forth our best. For our rivals and companions, sometimes foolish, sometimes wise, for the human web upholding this noble enterprise. 
For the common life that binds us through days that soar or plod. For this place and for those people, we give you thanks, O God. Friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it right, is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to give you thanks and praise, O God, this day and every day, as we remember the ways that you have moved throughout human history to reveal yourself to all people. We give thanks today for the ways that you have fed us and nourished us, for the stories we inherit from generations past about a God who nurtured Israel day by day in the wilderness, just as you nourish us now. I invite you to enter your own thanksgivings to God into the chat box at this time. We give thanks for the community of the St. James School that has brought so much life to all who know it and to our own church. For Peggy, for her birthday yesterday, and for the wonderful spirit she has and the life of practical love every day. For Josh and Taylor starting their life together Thanksgiving for Melinda's 50th birthday, for Nalak and her family, and for the mural team. Thanksgivings for St. Andrews and the ways that we nurture and support each other. For Margot Porter's second birthday. For amazing family near and far. For the Moors and for their lives together. I give thanks for church communities that remind us of the turn of life from births to deaths to weddings to anniversaries and birthdays that happen at all times. You're invited to continue to enter your thanksgivings as I continue with the Eucharistic prayer. We remember that on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, O God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Recalling now his suffering and death and celebrating his resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Accept, O Lord, our sacrifice of praise, this memorial of our redemption. Send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts and let them be for us the body and blood of your Son. Grant that we who share this bread and this cup may be filled with your life and goodness. Fill our hearts with an awareness of your nearness, and we, may we know ourselves to be one in Christ. Although celebrating at different tables, joining together to be his body in the world. Come, Holy Spirit, and renew your people. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 
And now as Jesus taught us, we so pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, behold what you are, the body of Christ. In May we be become, become what we receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our communion hymn for today is the first verse of I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger, and who believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Father beckons. And I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day. Thank you. Friends, let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, our creator, sustainer, and liberator, be with you all, now and always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn for today is the first verse of Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Guide me, O Thou Great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Oh, me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore. Feed me now and Friends, go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You're all invited and encouraged to stay here in the main room and ignore the invitation to join a breakout room.